Welcome back, fellow gamer. I have for you today another anti-deck tech for Commander. So I was asked to do one for Niv Mizzet the Firemine, and I honestly really enjoy crushing this deck, or at least providing you the tools with being able to counter this deck. So if you haven't played against a Niv Mizzet Firemine deck, you will not know the, the power that the pinging one when you draw a card does to uh, to a person who isn't ready for it and the card itself is still a good card so it's whenever you draw a card niv miss it the fire mine deals one damage to target creature or player tap to draw a card now it doesn't look that bad on surface if it's just the standalone card yeah he's drawing one uh, and then doing one damage to you not a big deal maybe but as soon as you see uh, the cards that it can combo with you get worried and you before you know it a curiosity hits the table and it's game over so curiosity is a card that is you know a win condition for this deck it's whenever enchanted creature deals damage to an opponent you can draw a card so you're doing that one damage you're drawing a card you're doing another damage from that card draw and the cycle continues uh, similar to Aphidian eye same deal except it costs a bit more uh, it has flash, so it can be something that you wouldn't expect. You're paying two extra mana, but to get an, on flash, let's say it's on at the end of your turn, you put this in, and boom, all of a sudden he's going off. There are a few other cards that that the niv Mizzet player will most likely have, but let's just focus on this ability of drawing lots of cards and then just doing a bunch of damage. How do you counter it? Well, first of all, if it's a combo, you're probably going to want something like Crows and Grip and other cards with Split Second. So Split Second allows uh, for the stack to pretty much remain as is and not be added on furthermore. So, you know, they wouldn't be able to do something in response. So as long as the spell is on the stack, players can't cast spells or activate abilities that aren't mana abilities. You might not be playing green, so it's always good to have a few other choices in colors. So there's... Sudden Death, which is also really good at getting rid of Niv-Mizzet if he isn't pumped up anyway. So giving the creature minus four, minus four until the end of turn is great, and him not being able to respond to it is even better. But you also have a card like Sudden Spoiling, so it really neuters not only that one creature that he has, but all the creatures. And it really prevents him from going off after the split second wears off. So some people will just be like, okay, you split second me, but you're not really doing anything. So once it's off the stack, I'll just continue on my combo with Nimizit. Here, there is no con combo to continue. So that's always a card. That's, sudden Spoil is a card I put in most of my black decks. I, I can think of very few scenarios where I wouldn't want Sudden Spoiling in a deck. And then there's also just getting rid of Niv Mizzet. So making him cost more. So by continuously killing the creature, uh, it's a great way of having the player not being able to play Niv Mizzet. Obviously he will still or she will still be able to play other cards and maybe draw other cards from other abilities like a Consecrated Sphinx or Mind Over Matter. There is something to be said about denying him the general, which is one of the centerpieces of of the deck is, you know, every time that a player is drawing a card, or sorry, he's drawing the card and doing one damage to you, not having Niv Mizzet out there is perfect, in my opinion. So, Beast Within is a good one. There's Rapid Hybridization. Lignify is good because it keeps Niv Mizzet out on the battlefield, and if he doesn't have uh, enchantment removal, well, it's a 0 4 Tree Folk. He can certainly kill his own creature in order to be able to cast Niv Mizzet again. But wasting a kill spell on on his own creature is great. But then again, if you also just want to put him into, you know, a vegetative state and turn him into a forest, I know trees aren't vegetables, but I had to, you know, I just had to say it. You can always use this card. There's also Swords to Plowshare, Hero's Downfall, uh, and really a lot more. I, I, I can go on. There's like Doomblade and, you know, Path to Exile and all these other cards that really provide great spot removal, so just getting rid of Niv Mizzet as much as you can is one way of denying him his powerful, powerful ability. Another thing that I also like to use is Grave Pact. So if I'm running a token-based deck and he can easily kill off my 1-1s one by just pinging my, my creatures for one, well, you know, he's then gonna have to sacrifice his own creatures. And I, if I'm playing tokens, I can be pretty confident 
in saying that I'll have more creatures than my opponent. So it will not be before long that this person runs out of creatures. But what if he starts directing his damage to you? Because ultimately he has to or she has to kill you in order to win the game or wait you out until there's no more cards in your deck or some other alternate win condition. I like to play Urza's Armor. There's not very many instances where I would play Urza's Armor. It's not really a great card. It costs six, but it does prevent Niv-Mizzet from doing damage to you and going off. So him doing one damage and you preventing one of that damage just makes it so that you're kind of invincible. You're Boris. But then again, I also would rather have Hexproof on you as a player. So Leyline of Sanctity is a good one. Orbs of Warding is pretty good as well. Combos with Urza's Armor and Leyline of Sanctity. So I did say, and not only that, it's it's costed one better than Urza's Armor. Kind of, I like to play with something that says Urza on it. So why not? <laughs> but again this orbs of warding is probably the better selection if you're really going to pick one or the other and i think it's more readily available being from magic origins a privileged position allows for your permanence to be protected so not being able to be targeted through niv mizzet's pinging or from any spells that this player would cast there's also witch bane orb so as curses become more and more prevalent because it seems like they're going to start printing them in other sets not just on the innistrad uh, setting, you might benefit additionally from just destroying curses attached to you, but it also gives you hexproof. Now, I also like to deny the Niv Mizzet player drawing ability, so a card like Omen Machine, where players can't draw cards, is good. And the second part of this card is at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player exiles the top card of his or her library. If it's a land card, that player puts it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, the player casts it without paying its mana cost if able. So while you are being able to cast cards, uh, you aren't like the Niv Mizzet player isn't really drawing cards, which is kind of the reason why the deck is built, right? <laughs> so it's preventing him there. Also, Leovold, Emissary of Trust. This is an expensive card, but it's a card that I actually really enjoy playing. Uh, again, I think I'm going to take this moment to say that I don't play with a ban list. I don't remember if he's banned or not in a certain format. Yeah, I think he is banning Commander. Regardless, I don't play with a ban list, so that's why I'm including him on this list. And if you're playing with just a bunch of friends, you might not be playing with a ban list either. So, there's uh, you got that going for you. Another card would be Marilyn of the Morn Song. So you might be like, oh, hold up. Hold up, you're not reading this card all the way, and it's actually not a good card for you to select. Well... Let's read that second part. So first of all, first is players can't draw cards. That's great. Second part, at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player loses three life, searches his or her library for a card, and puts it into his or her hand, then shuffles his or her library. Now, yes, they can just tutor up a card that will get rid of whatever negation that you're running. Well, this is a one-two combo because you play this card with stranglehold and you are denying the player cards now yes card denial isn't fun and locking them out isn't really that fun but this is a person that was going to just draw their whole deck and kill you anyway so we're preventing the strategy from actually winning the bonus here is that it's an insane card when you combine stranglehold and Marilyn together so I'd only play these two cards together. I definitely would play Stranglehold if you're playing red. I don't see a reason not to play Stranglehold. But let's continue. I also like to prevent just the enchantments from getting out onto the battlefield or having a way of dealing with enchantments because with Curiosity, it can come out and just, you know, destroy you. So Aura Silence, making it cost two more, but then being able to sacrifice this card to destroy a target artifact and enchantment is great now one thing is that they might be able to combo off beforehand uh so that's one thing that you need to you need to worry about but making them pay two more for it can disrupt their plans for a bit maybe give you a bit of time uh there's also you know presence of the master which is actually really good because it's whenever a player plays an enchantment spell counter it so that means that if they play you know their curiosity well it gets countered right away now they would need some sort of counter spell where it can counter a triggered ability so that's one way of getting around presence of the master or just going ahead and destroying the enchantment but i always find that enchantments are, are harder to get rid of because not that many people play 
enchantment removal. So this might save you. But speaking of counters, it's important to note that you should probably be running a significant amount of counters because Niv-Mizzet will be running counters as well. Playing red-blue, the players that I've played against that have had Niv-Mizzet have stacked up on counter spells. So one thing that you might want to do as well. It also, in a pinch, will allow you to counter a player that's casting Niv-Mizzet. Let's get back to that enchantment removal for a second. So let's say you have split second somebody and you've turned their creatures into zero two with sudden spoiling as an example well it doesn't really do much unless you're able to get rid of the either the enchantment or the creature at a later point in the turn so i always like to remove instant speed enchantment removal now yeah it is niche and sometimes it will be pretty expensive but i still feel that it is a good idea to do so a card like deicide which exiles an enchantment uh, Abolish, Aura Mutation, Golgari Charm, Natural State, and even Quiet Purity. These are all good cards to just get rid of those enchantments at the last second. And it stops the player from playing with that enchantment. So it is something that I do run and I would recommend you running it. Uh, enchantment removal, niche cards I, I generally stray away from. But when it's like a two card combo like this, you need answers. And I just want to make sure that my enchantment removal is low cost. I'm not spending a whole lot of mana and I can keep, you know, one or two mana open to ensure that A, maybe the player won't know or B, uh, just having that redundancy. So, you know, we can definitely load up our deck with permanent removal and keep it as versatile as possible. But the redundancy of having that enchantment removal is where it comes into play. I would much rather prefer just not having niv it out on the battlefield, so my best strategy would still remain creature removal. So whether that's mass or spot, uh, you decide depending on the deck styles that you are encountering. So not just this niv it player, but what does the board look like? So there you have it. Those are my big selections for countering a niv it deck. So it won't be 100% of the time, and if you're trying to bring this into a competitive setting, you're not really going to win that many games. But if you just want to bolster up your chances of beating that niv it player, this is a great video for you. Uh, as always, if you have any suggestions on anti-deck tech videos that you would like to see, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear it. In the meantime, you can check out some of my other videos. And if you'd like to subscribe, it not only helps the channel out, but it lets you know when we upload new content and is greatly appreciated. I'd like to thank you for making me a part of your day. And until next time, good gaming.